Well, it's Tuesday again, and we're still messing around with these uh, shows on electrics um, for your model railroad. Today, we're dealing with something that's much more basic to model railroading. We've been talking about some sort of ethereal things like Ohm's Law and that sort of thing. Now let's get down to brass tacks, as they say. Now, last time I mentioned that when you put multiple locomotives on uh, the train, that the load goes up and up and up. Each locomotive draws more amperage, uh, which makes sense. If we were to uh, look at a diagram and we could see the two tracks, uh, left and right, I like to think of them as inside and outside. I'll explain that in a future video. But as you put a locomotive on there, it's putting a load across the track. So if you look at it, you're actually putting these loads on parallel to each other. One thing about parallel is as you're putting the loads on there, you're drawing more and more amperage. So if we have um, a locomotive sitting on the track and we've got a power supply that's capable of providing five amps and that locomotive is, is drawing one amp, we place another one on there. Now it's drawing two amps. We place another one three. Now it isn't exactly that kind of parallel system, but um, because the more you put on there, it, it has some weird effects on the power supply, which we'll get to. Now, as we approach the limits of the power supply, so now we've got four locomotives on there and the power supply is beginning to struggle a little bit because we're really loading it up. And as we load up the power supply and get close to its rated output, the voltage will start falling off because the power supply is having a little bit of trouble keeping up with it. When we land on the, the rated uh, current of that power supply, say five amps, the voltage will fall way off. And because the current flow is so high, the power supply will start to overheat. And after a short period of time, the circuit breaker will trip and, sh and save the whole system by shutting it off. If we place a screwdriver across the rails, then of course a tremendous amount of current will flow through there. The voltage will drop sharply off to practically nothing and the circuit breaker will, will trip instantly, uh, which is why all these things have a circuit breaker in there. Anyway, the idea of parallel loads, uh, because the voltage falls off and the amperage goes up and, and we don't want to overload the power supply, some power supplies uh, back in the days when everything was pure DC, uh, a lot of people wanted to have voltmeters and amp meters right on their power supply. And I always thought that was a really neat thing and I like to have that. And the nice thing is you you have several locomotives on there and you're turning the speed up and you're watching the voltage come up. And as you're doing it, you're seeing the amperage come up. And then as you get up on the hill, you see that the the voltage is sitting here at say 10 volts and the amperage is coming up and up and up and up and up because the load is, you know, you're on the hill pulling a train. And as you do that, then you see the voltage starting to go down and in a worst case scenario, doink, everything goes to zero because you tripped the breaker. Um, one other thing to keep about, uh, keep in mind about parallel uh, items going into the circuit in theory, you could put power supplies also in parallel across the track. So you could put a power supply here and a power supply here. And that way the voltage would stay the same, but the amperage coming from those power supplies, if you had two five amp power supplies, now you've got 10 amps. The problem, and it's a really big problem, is only one of those power supplies has a throttle on it. So unless you could match both throttles and keep everything identical, you're going to have a real mess on your hands. But in these days of DCC, uh, digital command control, the current to the, uh, the voltage to the track is, is set. It's, a, it's an alternating current, a digital uh, square wave alternating circuit. But because of that, because the voltage never changes, you can put parallel power supplies on there. As long as they're all sending the exact same digital signal, 
all those throttles will be connected. So as you're moving up the throttle, every power supply is going to work together because they're all locked to the, the master clock. So that is something that you can do in DCC is parallel power supplies. But in pure DC, mm -hmm. that ain't going to work. You just have to have a power supply that's capable of doing what you're doing. And some of the people who are out there who refuse to switch over to DCC uh, are saying that because they're running these massive railroads with a lot of locomotive going all at the same time, pulling incredibly heavy loads, uh, they don't want to try switching over to DCC. They just want to keep their 30 amp power supply that they've built and their gauges on there and everything. And they just brute force the whole thing with a great big, huge power supply. Anyway, parallel loads on the circuit is what I wanted to really drive home here is that our locomotives and lights and everything else that we're putting on the power supply typically are going in there in parallel. If you add another light, you add another light, you add another light, you're increasing the demand on the power supply that's powering the lights. Another locomotive, another locomotive, another. You're increasing the demand because the, the resistance is going down and therefore the amperage is going up. And then again, at a certain point in time, when you start overloading the whole thing, your lights will get dimmer and dimmer and dimmer and dimmer because the voltage is going down and down and down and down. But that happens more toward the top of where the power supply is failing. Hope that all makes sense. Anyway, I uh, hope you like this series. And if you do, I, I hope you want to follow along. The best way to follow along is to click on the upcoming blue button. Zoink! Right there, the blue button. Well, I'm not sure how you found this video on the internet. I hope you don't find it boring. And we'll see you here on Sunday with some Sunday foolishness. We'll see ya. Bye-bye.